is magnificent, it's majestic. I've just always loved even the shape of the facade, you know, there's something about it. I once had a paranormal experience a few years ago on vacation and have been intrigued ever since. My paranormal investigation took me to historic Ybor City. Centro Asturiano de Tampa, the premier Cuban club of 1914, where culture and history lie deep in these walls. I once had a paranormal experience a few years ago on vacation and have been intrigued ever since. So I teamed up with two paranormal investigative groups, Flash and Aura, you know that a man used to live here. Do you still take care of this place? To try to learn more and maybe contact the other side. In the early 1900s, the building played host to many immigrant workers from Ybor City. This was a place where workers came to relax and be entertained. We're going to set up our equipment. We usually like to use these K2 meters, the locations that we feel will get activity. Tell me how many spirits are up here with us. And we're going to walk through with voice recorders. If there's anybody here with us right now, can you make a noise or a sound? What are you looking for specifically? Well, we go in. As we were recording our interview with Sarah, it was interrupted by an EVP Bonnie captured in the backstage area of the theater. Ready. Back here with me. Is there anybody back here with me? We quickly investigated. Was somebody trapped in this room? The unknown sound Bonnie captured may have been from an old caretaker who lived in the building. Employees claim to have seen an image of a man sitting in the rafters. How many people are here with you? How many people are here with you? Well, I was initially drawn to this building um, because there were stories of a man and a woman being seen sitting in a front row of the theater. I used dousing rods on this part of the investigation and asked questions to the couple. Are you upset that we are here? If you are upset, cross the rods. If you're not, pull them apart. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. As we close this investigation, this is by no means an open or shut case. And Central Historiano de Tampa will remain as one of Ybor City's greatest mysteries. of the Texas Revolution resonated with a very young Phil Collins, especially the Battle of the Alamo and Davy Crockett. It was just something that grabbed me, as did drumming, because they both happened at the same time when I was about five years old. Collins says it all started with Fess Parker as Davy Crockett, king of the wild frontier. I just brought a come in and I figured out a report. I'm Davy Crockett from Tennessee. It's on, it's on, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming, you <laughs> know, put the hat on. Don't reckon I'm much more than a high private. Why, well, you're the most famous fighting man of our time. I came across it on TV and, and that was really it. And then by the time you got to the last episode of King of the Wild Frontier, you know, at the Alamo, I was well and truly hooked. Just take that with me now. Collins would go on to be a mega rock star with Genesis and sold 150 million albums as a solo artist, touring the world winning Grammys, Brits, and an Academy Award for his music. But he would always remember the Alamo. I've just always loved even the shape of the facade, you know. There's something about it that's always drawn me to it. I'm not a musician anymore. Now, Collins has amassed one of the biggest collections of Alamo memorabilia in the world. There's the Crockett. 
musket ball pouch and, and his powder flasks. Along with Davy Crockett's almanac, a Mexican cavalry officer's helmet, weapons, documents, and battlefield letters. Phil Collins's collection is, well, it's what's been needed for a long time. Dr. Bruce Winders is the curator at the Alamo. He's made it a mission really to collect as much as he can. With his resources, he's amassing a collection that no museum has ever been able to, to do. Collins even bought a building next to the Alamo and ripped out the floors. And it was like, okay, we start digging. They went 45 inches down to what is called the battle level. There's a handmade dice that we found that was obviously made by some soldier and buckles off shoes and buttons off jackets and cannon handles and a flattened cannonball that hit the wall and bounced back. It was a great experience, I have to say. And a great collection of Texas history that some hope will find its way back to the Alamo. You know, that's the question is what happens to his collection? Uh, I think most people would like to see it come to the United States at some part or at some time to be either on a temporary exhibit or permanently here. And, you know, that may happen. But for now, Collins relishes every find, reliving the Battle of the Alamo as he wonders who held that musket, fired that cannon, or wrote that letter before the doomed defenders took a final breath and fought against all odds for freedom. I think the thing that fascinates me, or well, one of the things that fascinates me, is the fact that we don't, we don't know. But I'm not the only one. I'm not the only strange one. There's um, quite a lot of Europeans that um, are, are interested. The sound of the organ is, is magnificent. Is there anybody out there? It's hard to see into the darkness of the Tampa Theater. The spotlight's on you and you're performing. That's, that's fun. For Richard Gleason, he's right at home hitting the keys of the theater organ. It's is magnificent, it's majestic. You have a whole orchestra here in front of you, though this, some of the sounds don't sound exactly like an orchestra. It's that majesty that you have the control, the power. He had his first experience when he was a kid and never looked back. My parents had taken us to a movie, me and the rest of the kids, and as we walked in the door, the organ was playing, and the big pedal notes were rumbling out through the doors, and I could, that, that did it for me. Was that weird at age nine to be passionate about? No. Okay. I mean, you like your toys when you're, when you're nine? Of course. Say it's a toy, it's a big boy's toy. Gleason has been around these big boy toys for about five decades. It's like an automobile. If you don't take care of it, it's going to stop running. And at the Tampa Theater, he's the man behind the instrument, which is behind the music to silent films. Any tunable instrument starts to go out of tune as soon as you tune it. Pipe organ goes out a little bit faster than, let's say, a guitar or a violin. They tune the organ twice a year with a little spot tuning whenever is needed. The atmosphere of the theater and so forth makes you look a little younger than you are. Believe it or not, Richard is 81 and has no plans of stopping. How much longer do you want to keep this? Until I die. Till the end. Don't get old. As a retiree and volunteer, he says the musical notes sound far better than the C notes. My, I get paid for the pleasure of doing it. A hobby. It's like people collect stamps and coins, I collect pipe organs. Thank you.